ಆಪ್ಯಾಯಂತು ಮಂಗಾನಿ ವಾಕ್ಪ್ರಾಣಶ್ಚಕ್ಷುರೋತ್ರಮಥೋ ಬಲಮೇಂದ್ರಿಯಾಣಿ ಚರ್ವಾಣಿ ಸರ್ವ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮೋಪನಿಷದ ಮಾಹಂ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ನಿರಾಕುರ್ಯಾಕರೋತ್ ಅನಿರಾಕರಣಮಸ್ತು ಅನಿರಾಕರಣ ಮೇಸ್ತು ಸದಾತ್ಮನಿ ನಿರತೆ ಯ ಉಪನಿಷತ್ಸು ಧರ್ಮಸ್ತೇ ಮಯಿ ಸಂತು ತೇ ಮಯಿ ಸಂತು ಓಂ ಶಾಂತಿ 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 may all my limbs attain strength may the body the mind all the sensory and motor organs they become efficient and powerful all is verily the one way without second ever blissful ever perfect existence itself the brahman let me never deny this existence of all pervading brahman may the brahman never reject me either may all the virtues necessary to experience this truth in life be with me om peace 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 let us feel the intrinsic oneness of all the existence by feeling that we are like the animal crackers the shapes are different but the reality the essence in all these shapes is the same so let us feel that sameness in all of us and think about it that is the source of all bliss all peace om is 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 So dear friends today is a double blessed day it is the holy day of good friday and also swami yogananda a direct disciple of shri ramakrishna his birth anniversary and we shall be now continuing with the study of bhagavatam that makes here every friday very holy because we are studying the great book that brings up the devotional fervor it makes us feel our intrinsic divinity and that the goal of life is to experience this that is the only thing that can make the life meaningful so uh, and all these things are told through very interesting uh, absorbing stories so that is the unique feature of this kind of literature 
called Purana. So Puranas are like that. They uh, tell these ideas through stories. So the story attracts human mind. And then through that story, the truth gets to us. Mm, like when some medicine is inserted in us through a shot, a needle goes in. Mm, because the medicine, if directly poured, it won't go inside. So you uh, use a needle that goes into the uh, muscle or the vein uh, and then uh, that medicine goes in. The needle comes out. Mm, so the story comes out, but the uh, teachings that get inserted through the story they do their job. So let us begin with the our regular uh, opening prayer. So please recite as loudly as you can. This is the first verse of this great text, Srimad Bhagavatam. Janmadhyasya yatun vayaditarata Chārthe-śva-bhijñasvarāt Tene brahmaridāya ādhikavaye Muhyantiyat sūraya Tejo vārimridāṁ yathā vinimayo Yatra trisargo mrishā Dhāmnā svena Sada nirasta kuhakam satyam param dhe mahe. That from whom creation, sustenance, and dissolution of the universe take place, who is both the instrumental and material cause of it, who is omniscient, is the only one having self mastery, having the one independent entity who illumined the mind of Brahma with the Vedic revelation, whose wisdom is the wonder of even the greatest sages, in whom the world of the three gunas subsists, just as the combination of materials like fire, water and earth subsist in their causes without changing their elemental nature in whose consciousness there is nothing false. On that truth supreme, we meditate. We were going through the sermon of the great sage, a little boy actually, but it doesn't matter whether somebody is a small child or a, a very old person. Uh, anybody uh, who has the touch of the Absolute, who has become by that a tremendously devoted and saintly person. Uh, from that person, anybody can learn. So, this is a little boy, Prahlada, and this sermon is given to the children of similar age, and they were studying at the school. Mm. So the school was, uh, of course, not going to teach these things. And that school was more secular than our present day secular education institutions. Mm. It is that all the, uh, the demonic teachings were given that no God, kick out God, there is nothing but uh, the Hiranyakashipu, uh, the, their king, uh, was the Lord. He is all powerful and he should be worshipped, that's about it. So this being the case, the school teachers always taught only these things. Mm, they taught about the general morality, the secular morality, then that is called dharma, and then artha, how to earn money, 
and how to fulfill the desires the other thing they did not teach that is the last and the ultimate of the achievements of human life called liberation or moksha so this was a not a taught at all thus you know uh, the uh, demon kids were supposed to uh, become by this training they a uh, very well established as demons or suras and uh, we saw earlier the meaning of this word asura means those who are identified with the physical or the bodily existence that's all that is there that is their uh, idea and so the only thing to do is mm, gratification of the body so uh, but as you know uh, there is a lot of debate between nature and nurture mm, the nurture many behaviorologists say that nurture is all that is there is nothing like that is uh, so some only accept up to genetic transmission that so by training anybody can be made anybody and there was one uh, behaviorologist some say that that quote of his has been taken out of context but the quote is there basically that uh, he said uh, give me any uh, dozen kids from the street and tell them whom you want to make a mathematician whom do you want to make a musician whom do you want to make a doctor uh, i can make anybody uh, what you want that child to become become uh, by this is called nurture mm, that train and then that fellow will do uh, whatever the training is so this was like that that they, they all children would be trained in the demonic doctrine so that they will become a uh, very fit very good uh, devilish demons so it is uh, that is the purpose but then there is something that is nature you cannot change it you know it is uh, you can have say an orange plant orange and there is apple oranges are there apples are there so you can make uh, nurture uh, them so that they can bring nice oranges nice apples very good but can you make that the orange tree by nurturing and uh, get apples that would be too tough you know it is uh, that to get apples on the oranges orange tree because the nature is very different so therefore that is not possible uh, here the prahlada has this nature and devotion uh, very uh, deeply devoted to god right from the childhood it is not that he became a devotee just as it will we will read it by the teachings of narada narada did impart him the ultimate teaching but still he had that germ in him and so he uh in spite of the training was just a demon uh, instead of being a demon a devotee so he was teaching to the, the other children so instead of imbibing the school things he started uh, telling these uh, demon kids that look ah uh, you should turn first he told what is the result of getting involved in the worldly 
pursuits you will go away from god you will go away from the goal of life and your life will be in ruins uh, you will have thought these all these bondages we saw earlier that how the life gets mm, into that uh, terrible situation uh, it becomes just an animal life with no satisfaction and the same thing that you keep on doing every day uh, thinking that that is what is life sometimes to get some boost to that you arrange parties or go to parties uh, so that all your like minded people will be saying hey very good oh you got promotion in your job very nice uh, okay and all those that stuff you know that is running about sense pleasures and the money to get it uh, so that is uh, uh, the life a life that has no goal and does it rots in this uh, situation as so prahlad told that if you uh, go in that direction that will be the condition of your life but now there is the reverse change the direction to that which is real if you have the direction of your life towards that which is unreal the result is this you will get frustrated how will you not get frustrated you are running after that which is not real so automatically frustration will be the result Mm, it is simple logic nothing much uh, to you know uh, debate about it that if you go to something that is not real mm, that's what all what you get not real everything we accumulate by that kind of exercise is fake uh, but now you have the scope to change the direction Uh, to that which is real that is called god that is called narayana now prahlad calls it narayana narayana etymologically mean the goal of human beings narena ayanam eti narayana or the friend of human beings mm, that also is narayana so it is uh, nara narayana so narayana uh, he says that uh, it is so easy to you know get in touch with narayana and get his love it is not difficult at all to please narayana because many of us have this a very erroneous idea that Uh, to turn mind to god is very difficult and uh, to get the grace of god is very difficult to get the vision of god is uh, very very difficult for ordinary people uh, many say like this that we are not saints you know we are ordinary people and therefore we are not uh, made to see the god it is very very difficult but we saw that it is not very difficult it is in fact the easiest thing hmm it is the easiest thing because it is there you know it is there god is there uh, it is for example how difficult will it be for me now to see uh, this uh, krishna brown student here uh, how will it be how difficult it is krishna uh, very easy isn't it yeah because you are right here so i don't have to do anything uh, just if my eyes are closed just open and i can see you 
So God like that is everywhere, is in everything, is our indwelling soul. Mm, it is, that is actually the proof given uh, of the existence of God in many Vedantic literatures, that it is, God is there means, yes, if you are there, God is there. And that is the, what is actually you, and that is God. So, uh, try to find out who really you is. So, that is a method uh, by which one can realize this. Uh, it is called the self-inquiry, the method of self-inquiry. Who am I? And so, it is right here and is in everything it is uh, therefore it should not be difficult you can communicate with him through anything you come in touch with whatever there is narayana the god there and like you know, when you see a movie every picture that you see what it is really it is screen mm. So, how can you miss the screen? And will you say it is so difficult to see the screen? Uh, I was seeing the movie, that was not difficult. But seeing the screen was so difficult. No, what you were thinking as seeing movie actually, and there was only screen, the reality of all pictures. So, that is what friends, Prahlada is telling, it is so close to us. We can easily communicate with God through any being. Uh, this will be later described, that this question was asked to him, where is that Narayana that you are talking about by his father? He said, I have subdued every single fellow in this universe and I am not uh, mm, afraid of that your Narayana, I will kill him also. Where is he? Where do you see him? So, uh, Prahlada said, well, he is everywhere. Now, how, that which is everywhere, how can you point out that he is here? Not possible, he is everywhere. So, and that father angrily asked in that uh, hall, there were uh, many pillars. Do you mean to say that that fellow is Narayana is in this pillar? Well, if everywhere, then that means he's in the pillar as well. If you want to see through the pillar, there is a, is in the pillar. And then the story goes on that how uh, Hiranyakashipu kicked that pillar. And then, uh, a very terrible form of Narayana emerged there. That part we will see uh, later on, and uh, not in today's class. But uh, the point is that he is everywhere, in everything, and uh, there is his presence. So, uh, it is, uh, a, there used to be a very nice uh, Hindi song that uh, whom you are uh, looking in uh, uh, caves and forests and all that, uh, that is Wo Savala Salona Basata Hai Tere Man Mein That Lord is actually within you and is everywhere uh, he is in the waters of the rivers, he is in the deep ocean. Uh, every, wherever you see, uh, Jalwa Jalak Raha Hai, Usi Ka Jalwa Jalak Raha Hai. Uh, he is in everything and is, whatever you see is his manifestation. That is how everything is really manifesting the glory of God. So, uh, this is the great Upanishadic teaching in the Kain Upanishad. 
प्रतिबोध विदितम मतम गॉड इज नोन इन एवरी वाइब्रेशन ऑफ कॉन्शियसनेस इट इज वॉट एवर यू बिकम अवेयर ऑफ यू आर एक्चुअली बिकमिंग अवेयर ऑफ गॉड विदाउट यूअर नोइंग और विथ यूअर नॉलेज लाइक इन द मूवी वॉट एवर पिक्चर यू आर सींग यू आर एक्चुअली सींग द स्क्रीन यू आर बिकमिंग अवेयर ऑफ द स्क्रीन so every vibration of awareness you are actually becoming aware of god because god alone is the reality there other is just passing appearance so therefore uh, we must develop that uh, awareness that attitude that we should see in that sense that way uh, like instead of saying that i am seeing prithish here i am actually seeing god manifesting as prithish uh, not that i am seeing a uh, revered shuddhatma pranamata ji there i am seeing a uh, god in that form there uh, i am seeing uh, that vishwajit and uh, not vishwajit but god in the form of vishwajit and uh, that is what is you know uh, all that is uh, god in taking different forms and uh, that is what we meditate today because it was getting delayed we had a very short meditation but the meditation on animal cracker uh, the same substance that we eat whether we eat uh, calling it a giraffe or calling it an elephant or calling it an alligator uh, so many different shapes in the animal crackers uh, same substance uh, with different shapes so that is what is all around you know uh, that god alone is the existence in different shapes some very big shapes uh, like uh, uh, the um, sun moon or all the galaxies and black holes somewhat big shapes some are very small uh, maybe um, an electron uh, that is but all they are different small or big forms of the same one existence the shapes will change it is they are gone so therefore it is he tells him that god is known in every vibration of consciousness being omnipresent he is total undiluted bliss that is what prahlad tells his undiluted bliss uh if you see the contrast uh, what happiness we get it is uh, whatever little is it is all diluted actually it is suffering that we somehow label as happiness mm, it is uh, mixed with you know the reactions uh in fact the as buddha declared that this world is suffering and uh, what we get pleasure uh, is uh, some gap between uh, two sufferings we call that it is uh, this is pleasure so in uh, mahabharata and in some other treatises also there comes a very nice story that there is a man uh, was being chased by an elephant and is running elephants can run very fast so this man naturally elephant was gaining and so he got into a well then he saw a rope and so holding the rope he went into the well uh, as he was going down the, the well he saw in the bottom uh, there was a big snake there oh my goodness i cannot go down and he looked up the elephant was waiting for uh, this fellow to climb up 
so can't climb can't go down and to his horror uh, he saw two mice they were uh, that uh, cutting that rope you know uh, by their teeth they were cut chewing that rope oh my goodness that is the condition and uh, on that well there was a big tree hanging over it and there was a beehive and a drop of honey well as he was you can imagine you know holding the rope tightly like that uh, on his uh, arm fell a drop of honey and he licked like that and that is our happiness in the world and there is the <laughs> elephant standing there there is the big snake sir in the there and the rope is also the time the two you know mice that is allegory of time that uh, day and night and so it is described one is black one is white mouse both are so day time is passing away the rope is not going to be there for too long so that is and still in the middle of that imagine a drop of honey and then uh, so uh, that is <laughs> the what is the nature of the pleasures in this world it is although we are laughing it is absolutely no exaggeration it is that is how the condition of uh, the bound beings in this world is so uh, in contrast when we are established in truth it is undiluted total bliss because that is our true nature uh, that is uh, when we actually become united with our true nature when we see the truth then that is bliss because that is what we are so uh, and he advises them how to practically then change one's life hmm. as we have been always seeing that all these ideas are practical and being told to be implemented in our day to day practical life these are not lessons in academic philosophy hmm. it is meant for actually bringing about a change in life that is the big difference between the scientific truths and spiritual truths in science you don't have to lead your life according to what you discover if you intellectually present it and intellectually give your consent to it that's it then afterwards how you live uh, that is uh, nobody ask about it that is not the matter of concern in science mm, it is uh, for example you may say oh uh, everything is just composed of the fundamental particles uh, but uh, if a scientist uh, sees some delicacy Uh, that is served on his plate uh, he likes it a lot does he see only a collection of fundamental particles no that is in the lab you know that is yeah so those uh, uh, like at one time when there was the debate going on between whether the light should be considered as particle or wave uh, the uh, one scientist uh, prominent one at that time remarked that you know it is uh, on monday wednesday and friday we consider atom to be particle on tuesday uh, thursday and saturday we consider it to be wave sunday we go to church no physics <laughs> so <laughs> it is like that so uh, that uh they has no bearing to actually how you live life 
so but now in spiritual training the life needs to be transformed molded so that our attachment to that which is not real will get loosened will get cut and our attachment or love for the real the god will get enhanced so this is what should this now the demons have the problem uh, that uh, cruel their nature is cruel violent ill and so forth mm, it is uh, so he is telling them uh, give up because god is in every one so give up your uh, this violent cruel nature don't behave like this to anybody uh, because uh, then you are uh, killing or you are getting you know a, that enmity to god by that mm, so do not do that uh, be kind Uh, and then what will happen by that the indweller when you change your violent nature to this then the supreme lord will be pleased with you mm. so this is a matter of changing uh, our way of living this is called yoga and it is something personal now there is this very nice story about it that uh, uh, there were the uh, three categories of beings the celestial uh, demigods called devas then uh, there were the human beings and then there were these demons all is creation of one divine being so they went to their father prajapati that divine being and then asked give us advice now that uh, he didn't give any big advice uh, how long was the sermon you know can you imagine uh, how long was the sermon uh, any guess no no one that sermon was not 32 years long uh, how long was the sermon only one syllable actually the but three interpretations you are right good good this girl studies very good mm the ah uh, so the mm, now the three they it was meant for the transformation of their life so the celestial beings who were uh, after these enjoyments sensual enjoyments so they understood the meaning as daman means the means daman eh? means we have to control our these uh, uh, propensities of our senses to go out for enjoyment then human beings uh, they are possessive so they understood oh we have to give up this possessiveness mm, so they understood the meaning as dana means uh, giving you know yes give things uh, don't hold whatever you have give it so they understood that prajapati is telling us to give dana and then these demons they understood that the means daya means compassion yeah because we are cruel uh, so what we have to do is what change we have to bring in a bring in our life and the advice is daya we have to practice daya this is the story in brahadaranya upanishad so uh, very nice the idea is that uh, these teachings are personal means uh, they are to be applied 
to yourself and since each of us has a little different constitution uh, the application becomes a little different and that is the big idea very important idea taught in swami vivekananda that four yoga analysis four yogas uh, means intellectual uh, level has to be there so changing our uh, understanding uh, by applying the discernment what is permanent what is impermanent what is real what is unreal this is the yoga of knowledge jnana yoga uh, so since all of us are intelligent so we need to apply that also and even though all are intelligent uh, the our uh, not that everybody has uh, uh, such preponderance of uh, intelligence some are very intelligent some are not so i mean they don't go much by intelligence mm. and actually most of those who go call themselves intelligent or uh, they say that intelligentsia we are intelligentsia of the society just because they have some phd or something like that uh, so that is the only way, reason behind their being called uh, intelligentsia actually they are very emotional people they are guided not by their understanding but what they like and what they don't like Uh, that is uh, they are not at all intelligent in that sense they have very sharp intellect to analyze but that's about it that intellect doesn't have the power to overturn the emotional onslaught so therefore they think right but do not act right and that is uh, that steven pinker's uh, book on psychology uh, says that that it is uh, human beings uh, they think uh, that uh, intellectually but act um, emotionally uh, because that is how our so therefore that another yoga is important for that the yoga of devotion Uh, turn the emotions to the truth the god then there is the yoga of action turn your actions in such a way that uh, you will not get attached to them so get out of the attachment work is a great means for that that through uh, proper work Uh, in a very imperceptible unexplainable way our attachments get changed so therefore work hmm. it is then there is the yoga of meditation concentration and control called raj yoga so now everybody has to practice all four but in different proportions it is uh, the proportions become different like if you make a sweet uh, you pers- being sweet you put uh, sugar in them but some like a uh, very uh, high measure of sugar uh, like our jitendra uh, he wants the uh, sugar to be very high concentration of sugar there mm. his wife is opposite Uh, she doesn't want uh, that much sugar you know hey, uh, put it down you know so it is like that that uh, so somebody has uh, more intellectual capabilities some has more emotional tendencies so all uh, accordingly there will be a combination for each person so this is the transformation the demons they are told to transform their life like this so and then this is uh, when the god is please then what is there that is not attainable all money 
and all sorts of enjoyment will automatically be there if one wants. The question is, but who cares for such things anymore? <laughs> when you see God, all this becomes just trifling. No, it is. Uh, Ravana, uh, that story is very nice. Ravana had captive that captured Sita, abducted and kept, and then was uh, pleading her every day, would go and see, sit with her and say, hey, please, you uh, marry me. Uh, you give up that Rama and become mine. Uh, and he took... Uh, Reduce her, he used to uh, take many different forms. So somebody suggested, uh, you are taking various different forms. Uh, why don't you take the form of Rama? Mm, then she will immediately accept, isn't it? Take the form of Rama. He said, although a demon, you know, he said, as soon as I think of Rama, uh, there is no tendency to go for any enjoyment. Uh, bliss is with me. Just by thought of Rama, what to think of, you know, as, uh, seducing a woman? Uh, not possible. It is That is why I cannot uh, think of Rama. As if you think of Rama, as Tulsidas says, uh, karma goes away. Mm. Karma means lust. Uh, think of Rama and the lust bids goodbye. So, uh, this is the uh, idea there that if you get, uh, everything will be available now. Because Lord is pleased with you, but then if Lord is pleased with you, would you want some such things? Impossible. You won't like any such thing. There is a, a very nice story uh, that uh, somebody was looking for the touchstone. Actually, Ravindranath Tagore has written a nice poem on this. Uh, although the poem uh, has a different ending, this story has a little different ending. That it is... Uh, uh, he was, uh, for uh, decades, he was roaming uh, to different places to find a touchstone. Uh, and would be picking up a stone. Touchstone means that which if you touch to a baser element like, say, iron or some iron, then that iron becomes gold. That is the touchstone. Some call it philosopher's stone or whatever. Yeah. So touch, uh, and so he had a iron belt, and so he would pick up, touch it, pick up, and then nothing was changing. They he went on, went to all different places, different mountains, and then uh, he came to a hermitage and then the hermit asked, oh, what is it that you are looking for? I have been for decades, I am wandering all around to get this a touchstone. Uh, Tagore's poem has a difference, uh, up to this it is same, but it didn't come to a sage. Uh, a child asked him, uh, according to Tagore's story, uh, a nice poem, that uh, the child asked, where did you get this gold belt? Gold chain like this? Mm -hmm. He was, oh, some stone he had touched, but he was uh, didn't care much. He was touching, he got into the habit of touching the stone and throwing. Uh, so, uh, didn't notice when it became gold and what was that stone. And so he threw it where to look for the stone. That is the 
uh, Rabindranath Tagore's poem. Uh, very nice, intriguing. Uh, but this story is like this, that the sage says that, oh, you want um, that kind of a stone? Uh, right there, you know, you see a stone there, you, you can take it. And he picked it up and touched it. Oh, yes! This is it. He was overjoyed. Uh, his search for the whole life uh, is now fulfilled. He took up that stone and then started going. And then a thought came to him. Hmm. That sage had that stone there. He did not care for it. He just, uh, it was lying like that. And when I asked, he gave me. And he didn't care for it. So there is, uh, this stone is uh, not as valuable as something that the sage has got. And so, uh, he came to the sage, said that, no, I don't care for it. Uh, I do not care for anything, any gold. I want to get uh, what you have. So that is how when you get God, why do you care for these earthly things? I want a few dollars, means more worries. Uh, I want to get uh, a, a promotion in my job. Uh, okay, more worries. Uh, yeah, it is. So we keep on going for such things, never ending uh, in that way our life's thirst. But when, as you see, the God within, that is the reality, uh, see that, and <laughs> then all the lacuna just vanishes, friends. Nothing remains to be achieved in life then. And it is true, it is a matter of if you just give it a try and you will have it, you know. It is, we don't give it a try, thinking that, no, it is probably not for me. There are different people for different things. Uh, but this is, anyone who wants, it is available. If one doesn't want, of course, it is a different thing. So this is, so this is what he, Pralhada, tells his friends and says that, look, this is very simple something that uh, you should uh, take this. And he says, there are Vedas, uh, these, there is this, Vedas have two parts because some argue that uh, the Vedas tell you to go today for these heavenly enjoyments uh, where you will have all the merriment, uh, or the, that all these pleasant things and nice gardens and so forth, all will be there. The dancing and so on will go on eternally. And so you will be, uh, how to get there, that is one part of the Vedas mm, is in that direction, that to uh, uh, get the pleasures, fulfillment of sensual desires. That is one part of the Vedic instructions. And while those are being given, they also tell the ultimate truth from time to time. Why? Because without trying this out, one cannot turn to ultimate truth. Uh, there are very few people who can just by observation learn it. Uh, many have to give it a try themselves. Uh, and even after trying many times, people, with, uh, not that everybody learns. Uh, you have to try and get the blows. Uh, after getting the blows, then gradually you see that it was not right thing and then you turn. So, and then this second part that is called the ultimate teaching, 
that one makes one realize God. So Prahlada tells that this is the actual intention of the Vedas. The first part is necessary to do the second part. And so that is done for that purpose. Like you can see that the aeroplane first does the taxiing and then flies. Hmm. Now the purpose of taxiing is not, otherwise you can get an ordinary uh, this car and go by that. But why the plane is taxiing? Because it wants to take off. Uh, it wants to fly. And for that it is doing that. So, uh, that is why the Vedas first uh, come to the level of the common people there and then tell them certain mm, things that they will like to listen to get the enjoyments of life and then okay take this so and he tells how did he get this knowledge that he got it from Narada so uh, that sage gave him this knowledge uh, and I was blessed with his this knowledge by him then the students other students asked Oh, but then why uh, we didn't learn it in our schools? Uh, why other teachers are, we, we get that doubt. Swami, you are telling this, and what you say sounds, uh, makes sense. But this is not what we hear from others. In the society, you, we don't have these things being told to us. Our parents did not tell this to us. Uh, our other teachers in the schools, they talk, don't talk about it. Uh, do they talk about it at Brown Krishna? No. Uh, uh, do they talk about this? Uh, what? Vedanta, but uh, to give up other things and go to Vedanta? No. Uh, Vedanta academically taught. Okay, yeah, okay. Mm. It is... Uh, so this is the, why this is not taught to us. So the answer to that question will have to wait till the next chapter. This is the end of the seventh chapter uh, in the seventh volume. Now in the seventh volume, the eighth uh, chapter will begin. We shall uh, see it uh, after, say, about... Uh, uh, three and a half weeks or so, for four weeks. Uh, till then, the classes will continue, uh, but uh, only uh, videos. Uh, because uh, it is, uh, now this is 161st class. Uh, so we have to see something that is first class, second, third, fourth, like that. So, uh, I am uh, traveling for some days now, so therefore when I am uh, away, those classes will be shown here. And because uh, I have seen, all of us have tremendous power of forgetting. Uh, <laughs> so it is, so what was told, uh, say, five years ago, I don't think anybody remembers anything. So. It is so, uh, you can, you should listen to it again and uh, get more grounding on it. So let us conclude with the uh, closing chant and then in case if you have questions, uh, feel free to ask. Nigamakalpatarur galitam phalam shukamukhad amritadrava sanyutam Shibat Bhagavatam Rasamalayam Muruho Rasika Bhuvibhavuka Any questions? Huh? Oh, in uh, translation, oh devotees, quaff, quaff. To intoxication, this nectar of the fruit of the tree of Vedas, 
flowing from the mouth of the great sage Shuka and mixed with the ambrosia from his world. Any question? Oh, that Jitu has a question. This one. Um, the story with the elephant. Loud, loud. In the story with the elephant and the snake and the two mice. Hmm. Um, what? If if the honey represents worldly pleasures. Exactly. Um, what would be, like, bliss in that situation? What will be bliss? Or God. Bliss in that situation, in that situation when, uh, it's a very good question. Uh, in that situation when that person sees that I am not the body, I don't have to run away from anything. Mm, it is, I am in the elephant, I am in the snake, I am in the, those mice, I am in the rope. And so that's it, you know. And then you attain to the bliss. Mm. It is, yeah. The dream gets broken there, you know. In the dream, like when Jitu is in that situation in the dream. Uh, that, oh, elephant. <laughs> oh, snake, down. <laughs> How, what will happen? Uh, so... And then the dream goes away. Then there is no snake, no elephant, no... Uh, yeah, uh, that is the bliss. When this uh, dream of I am this body goes away. Uh, it is a dream. It is a telling lie to ourselves that I am this body. Knowingly. Mm, it is, we are not that body. So, when we realize this truth, then there is the bliss. Got it? I mean the answer, not the bliss, I mean, but, <laughs> but the getting the answer will make you get the bliss as well. Any other question here? Any question up there? No question. So, very good. We shall conclude with the closing chant. Closing song. Mukund Madhav Govind Bolkeshav Madhav Hari Hari Bol. Mukund Madhav Govind Bol. Keshav Madhav Hari Hari Bol. Hari Hari Bol, Hari Hari Bol, Hari Hari Bol, Hari Hari Bol, Krishna Krishna Bol, Krishna Krishna Bol, Krishna Krishna Bol, Krishna Krishna Bol. Mukunda Madhava Govinda Bol Keshava Madhava Hari Hari Bol Keshava Madhava Hari Hari Bol On coming Sunday there will be the special Easter service, uh, the Easter talk will be given by Prabhuraji Ka Shuddhatma Prana from Ridley Manor. She arrived just a late afternoon today. And she will also give on coming Tuesday uh, the class on Gospel of Sri Ramakrishna. Then uh, many very a nice lectures are coming up after that that it is uh, and they are all posted on our website facebook 
you must have received an email also if you are in the mailing list uh, about these wonderful very special lectures mm, so please try to uh, attend find time for these thank you